Hello and welcome to Impact Tuition. In this lesson, we will discuss an introduction to financial instruments and deal with financial liabilities in detail. Let's begin. A financial instrument is a contract that gives rise to a financial asset of one entity and a financial liability or equity instrument of another entity. So the same contract will give rise to two things, financial asset and then a financial liability. Let's pick a very simplified example. Suppose an entity issues some shares. To the holders of the shares, this is a financial asset. But to the entity, it will be a financial liability since they will have some obligation to settle towards the holders of the shares. So this is just a simplified example to illustrate how one contract will lead to a financial asset and then a financial liability depending on who is on either side of the contract let's look at the accounting standards that deal with financial instruments There are three reporting standards. That deal with financial instruments. We have IAS 32. IFRS 7. And then IFRS 9. IAS 32 is financial instruments presentation. IFRS 7 is financial instruments disclosure. And IFRS 9, financial instruments. Now, IAS 32 deals with the classification of financial instruments and their presentation in the financial statement. This is IAS 32. It deals with the classification of financial instruments and their presentation in the financial statements. IFRS 7 deals with how financial instruments are measured and when they should be recognized in the financial statements. Sorry, that is IFRS 9. So IFRS 9 deals with 
how financial instruments are measured. So the measurement of financial instruments and when they should be recognized. measurement of financial instruments and when they should be recognized in the financial statements. IFRS 7 deals with the disclosure of financial instruments in the financial statements. So basically, these three standards will be covered by the end of our discussion on financial instruments. Let's look at some definitions here. What is a financial asset? A financial asset is any asset that is cash cash a contractual right to receive cash or another financial asset from another entity contractual right To receive cash or another financial asset from another entity. A financial asset could also be a contractual right to exchange financial assets or liabilities with another entity under conditions that are potentially favorable. A contractual right to exchange financial assets or liabilities with another entity. under conditions that are potentially favorable. And finally, a financial asset could be an equity instrument of another entity. Right. A financial asset is any asset that is cash, a contractual right to receive cash or another financial asset from another entity, a contractual right to exchange financial assets or financial liabilities with another entity under conditions that are potentially favorable, and a financial asset is any asset that is an equity instrument of another entity. So examples of financial assets include investments in equity shares, investment in equity shares,
options trade receivables let's look at financial liabilities A financial liability is any liability that is a contractual obligation. It is a contractual obligation to do these things. One, to deliver cash or another financial asset. To another entity. Or to exchange assets or liabilities. Or financial liabilities with another entity under conditions that are potentially unfavorable. Or a contractual obligation that will or may be settled in the entity's own equity instruments. This is all for financial liabilities. Any liability that is a contractual obligation to deliver cash or another asset to another entity or any contractual obligation to exchange assets or financial liabilities with another entity under conditions that are potentially unfavorable or A contractual obligation that will or may be settled in the entity's own equity instruments. What are some examples? Trade payables, debenture loans. Redeemable preferences. Right. So, like I mentioned in the introduction, our focus for this lesson will be on financial liabilities. So let's dive right in.
financial liabilities. Initial recognition. A financial liability is initially recognized at its fair value. Now this fair value is usually the net proceeds of the cash received less any costs of issuing the liability. This is usually the net proceeds. Received. less any cost of issuing the liability subsequent measurement of financial liabilities Financial liabilities will be carried at amortized cost, other than liabilities held for trading and derivatives that are liabilities. So subsequently, financial liabilities will be carried at amortized cost. other than liabilities so these are exceptions that are held for trading and derivatives that are liabilities Now these two are outside the scope of the FR syllabus. How is amortized cost calculated? Amortized cost is equal to the initial value or the fair value of the financial uh, liability plus effective interest less the interest paid the effective interest and the interest paid will be different if there are additional cost of borrowing such as redemption premiums, issue costs, or discounts. Let's look at an illustration to understand how the amortized cost is calculated. Loan note is issued for 100,000 1,000 Ghana cities. The loan is redeemable at 1,250.
the term of the loan is five years. And interest is paid at 5.9% per annum. The effective rate of interest is 10%. Loan note is issued for 1,000 Ghana cities. The loan is redeemable at 1,250 Ghana cities. The term of loan is five years. The interest is 5.9% and the effective interest rate is 10%. Now we are to show how the value of the loan changes over its life. We are going to apply the amortized cost formula to do this. We will set this out in a table. We have the year and the balance at the beginning. The finance cost for the year, which is the effective interest rate. Ten percent. The interest paid during the year at five point nine percent. Then the closing balance at the end of the year. The balance carried down. We have year one, year two, year three, year four, and year five. The loan note is issued for a thousand. So that is our beginning balance. One thousand Ghana cities. Finance cost at 10%. This is 100. 10% of 1,000 is 100. And then 5.9% of 1,000 is 59. Let's refer to the formula. The initial value plus the effective interest rate less the interest paid. So 1,000 plus 100 minus 59 will give us 1,041. And this becomes our opening balance for year 2. 41. 10% of this is 104. And this is still 59. And 141 plus 101 minus 59 is giving us 1086. This becomes our opening balance. 
ten percent is one zero nine. We are picking the whole numbers. This is still fifty nine, and at the end of the year, thousand one thirty six. This becomes the beginning balance. Ten percent of this is one thirteen point six, but that's one thirteen less 59 the interest speed and we have 1190 at the end of year 5 the beginning of year 5 we have 1190 10 percent of this is 119 now at the end of year 5 we are paying the interest and then the principal or the amount that we received and that is thousand two fifty plus fifty nine no sorry the loan is redeemable at thousand two fifty so at the end of year five we are going to pay off the loan plus the interest for that year and at the balance at the end of the year is zero. On the total finance cost, for the five years, is five, four, five. Now, if you are to present this in a financial statement, at the end of each year, the closing balances here will go to the statement of financial position, and then our finance cost will be shown in the statement of profit or loss for each of the five years. So this is how amortized cost is calculated using the formula and it's set out in this tabular form so we can show the movement in the liability for the five year period. Preference shares. If preference shares are irredeemable, they contain no obligation to make any payment, either of capital or dividend, hence they are classified as equity. If preference shares are redeemable or have a fixed cumulative dividend, they are classified as a financial liability. From this we understand that the classification of preference shares depend on whether there is an obligation to make payment or not. So we have if irredeemable. And this is where they contain no obligations to make any payment. They are classified as equity. If redeemable, or they have a fixed cumulative dividend they are classified as a financial liability. So 
So this is all for preferences. Where the preferences are irredeemable. That is, the shares contain no obligation to make any payment, either of capital or dividend. You classify such preferences as equity. But where the preferences are redeemable, or they have a fixed cumulative dividend, then you classify such preferences as a financial liability. So the key element is that where there is an obligation, the instrument represents a liability. Right. Interests and dividends. The accounting treatment of interest and dividends depend upon the accounting treatment of the underlying instrument itself. So the treatment of the instrument giving rise to the interest or dividend would determine how the interest and dividends would be treated. So equity dividends are reported directly in equity. So in the case of uh, an irredeemable preference share, where it is classified as equity, any dividend relating to such preferences are reported directly in equity. Dividends on instruments classified as a liability are treated as a finance cost in the statement of profit or loss. So if classified as a liability, dividends are treated as a finance cost. in the statement of profit or loss. Right. Let's pick an illustration. On April 1, 2007, a company issued 40,000 Ghana CD redeemable preference shares. company issued 40,000 1 Ghana CD redeemable preference shares. Coupon rate of 8% per. They are redeemable at a large premium, which gives 
them an effective finance cost of 12% per annum. How will these redeemable preferences appear in the financial statements for the year ended 31st March 2008 and 2009? So you are required to show how the redeemable preferences would appear in the financial statements for the years ending 31st March. Two thousand and eight and two thousand and nine. Let's start. Let's calculate the annual payment at the coupon rate. So the annual interest that will be paid will be 40,000 shares times one Ghana CD times 8%. And this is giving us 3,200 Ghana cities. So let's set out our calculation like we did previously using the amortized cost formula. You have the years 2008 and 2009. Our opening balance, and then the finance cost at 12%, and the cash paid or the interest at 8%, and our closing balance. Opening balance is 40,000. 40,000 one Ghana CD shares. So 40 times, 40,000 times one, giving us 40,000. The finance cost at 12% is 4,800. The interest paid per our calculation is 3,200. And the closing balance is 41,000. 40,000 plus 4,008 minus 3,002, 41,600. This becomes the opening balance for year two, sorry, 2009. Finance cost at 12% is 4,992. And our interest paid is still the same. 3002 and this is giving us closing balance of 43,392. Now in the statement of financial position So the current year should be first. Two thousand and nine, two thousand and eight. In the statement of financial position. We have non current liabilities. And this is preference shares two thousand and eight. 
2009 the closing balance 43392 2008 41600 in the statement of profit or loss we have a finance cost 2009 finance cost 4992 and then 2008 finance cost 44800 so this is how the preference shares will be shown in the statement of financial position and the statement of profit or loss for the respective two years Let's look at compound financial instruments. A compound financial instrument has elements of both debt and equity. An example is a convertible bond. For a convertible bond, it can be converted into equity or redeemed for cash. Right. So when a compound financial instrument is issued, how do we account for both the debt component and equity component? On initial recognition, the compound instrument has to be split into two. That is, split between its component parts. So on initial recognition, On initial recognition, we split the convertible bond or the compound financial instrument into the two component parts. We have two steps, step one and step two. In step one, we derive the fair value of the liability, which is the debt component. And then in step two, we calculate the equity component as the difference between the total amount and the fair value of the debt component. Calculate the equity component 
as total amount of the convertible bond less the liability component. Now in step one, the fair value of the liability is the present value of the future cash flows discounted using the market rate of interest for non-convertible debt instruments. We'll pick an example and we'll see how this is done. So this is all for initial recognition. Subsequent measurement. Subsequently, the liability is measured at amortized cost. And then the equity is not remeasured. The equity is not remeasured and remains at the same value on the statement of financial position until the debt is redeemed. Again, the equity component is not remeasured. It remains the same value on the statement of financial position until the debt is redeemed. Let's look at an example. Illustration. A company issues a convertible loan that pays interest at 2% per annum in areas. The market rate is 8%, being the interest rate for an equivalent debt without the conversion option. So the rate for an equivalent debt without the conversion option will be used as the discounting factor. The loan of 5 million is repayable in full after three years or convertible to equity. So this tells us that it is a convertible loan. Either it is repayable in cash or convertible into equity. So let's see how this will be presented in the financial statements. Let's write the key things we need for a solution. Interest rate, convert co issues a convertible loan that pays interest of 2% per annum. The market rate is 8% being the interest rate for an equivalent debt without the conversion option. So our discounting factor, our discount factor is 8%. And this is the interest rate for an equivalent debt without the conversion option. 
the loan amount is 5 million Five million Ghana cities. And it's repayable in full after three years or convertible to equity. So the term is three years. So we are going to apply the steps to split this loan into the liability and equity components. Now per our steps. Step one says derive the fair value of the liability and which is done by discounting using the interest rate for an equivalent debt without the conversion option which in our case is the eight percent now when we've had the liability component we deduct that amount from the total amount and that becomes our equity component so we apply these steps to split into debt and equity components First, let's get our discounting factors. The discount factor at 8%. To get that, we apply the formula 1 over 1 plus the interest exponent n, where n represents the year. So for three years, we have 1 over 1 plus the interest which is 8% exponent 1, exponent 2, exponent 3. And that will give us our discount factor at 8% for each of the three years. So year 1, we will have 1 over 1.08 exponent 1. Year 2 becomes exponent 2. Year 3 becomes exponent 3. So year one, year two, and year three. Our discount factor is 0 0.926. Year two, 0 0.857. And year three, 0 0.794. We'll be using this discount factor to discount the cash flows to get our debt component. The cash flow is in millions, so we will hang three zeros up here. The cash flows is 2% times 5 million Ghana cities. But at the end of the third year, we'll be paying the interest plus the principal. So that will be 2% of 5 million is 100,000. We have three zeros up here, so we have 100 here. Year 2. Year 3, we are paying the interest plus the principal. So that will be 5,100. And the present value is 93 for the first year. Second year, 86. And this is four zero four nine. The sum of the present values is giving us four two two eight.
four two two eight. is our debt component or the liability component the cash received we received uh, the loan of five thousand we have three zeros up here so five million and the balancing figure is seven seven two 5,000 minus 4,228 and this becomes our equity component. So we are done with step one and step two. We've been able to split the cash received of 5 million into liability component and debt component all we did was to discount the cash flows and then deduct the sum of the present value from the cash received which is the total loan and the equity component is 772 what we have done is the initial measurement now, subsequently, this instrument will be measured at amortized cost. And we learned earlier that the equity component remains the same, but the liability is measured using the amortized cost formula. So we continue with our calculation. We apply the amortized cost formula for the three year term of the loan We have our opening balance. The finance cost it is at eight percent. Then the interest paid is at two percent, and then the closing balance. year one year two and year three our opening balance for year one is the equity component sorry the debt component which is four two two eight finance cost at eight percent will give us three three eight interest 2% of the total amount 2% of 5 million is 100,000 let's hang three zeros up Opening balance plus the finance charge minus the interest paid at the end of year one, we have four four 
six six and this becomes the opening balance for year two finance cost at eight percent is given as three five seven our interest paid is still the same hundred and we are having four seven two three this becomes the opening balance finance cost at eight percent is given as three seven seven sorry hundred hundred this is giving us five thousand with the three zeros up here and that's five million now one thing we should note is that at the end of the three years the current amount of the liability will equal the amount to be repaid if you are done with your calculation and what you have here at the end of the third year is not equal to the cash received for the loan then there's something wrong with your calculation right so this is how a compound financial instrument is split between its component parts the liability part and then the equity component so first of all you apply the discount factor which is the interest rate of an equivalent bond without the conversion option use that as a discount factor and then discount the cash flows from the convertible bond and that becomes your liability component and when we applied the discount factor for each of the three years on the cash flows the interest for year one interest for year two and then the interest and in principal for year three we had 4228 deduct that from the cash received from the loan or the bond and then we have the balancing figure which represents the equity component to be 772 subsequent and this is for initial measurement subsequently it is measured at the amortized cost and this is not done for the equity component because it remains the same until the bond is redeemed but the liability component has to be subsequently measured using the amortized cost and this is the calculation we have down here at the end of the term the closing balance should equal how much cash was received from the convertible bond or convertible loan and this is all we have for financial liability financial assets will be the subject of our next video kindly subscribe like this video and then share with friends who would need this as well thanks for watching and see you in our next video